much for y'all patience. Um, for those who've been following us, we've been doing, we've been in our Proverbs series for the last maybe six or seven months now. And we've been going in depth talking about the different topics that Proverbs talks about in regards to making us wise individuals. Um, this week is the last week of that series. Uh, and the last uh, six weeks we've been talking about the Proverbs 31 man and Proverbs 31 woman. So today we've been, we're going to talk about misinterdependent. Unfortunately, our screens are not working. So for those who are uh, integrated, <clears throat> for those who have uh, Twitter, Facebook, our hashtags this evening to make it easy for you is the Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, so if you can do that hashtag, let everybody know where you're at. If you hear anything that resonates with you, that you feel warm inside about, that say, you know, my friends need to hear what he just said, or something that you got inspired by while you listen, definitely feel free to tweet that information as well as put it on your Facebook and all your social medias. Uh, but in case you want to, you know, uh, use the other hashtag, the other hashtag is misinterdependent. M-R-S-I-N-T-E-R-D-E-P-E-N-D-T. Misinterdependent. <laughs> <clears throat> but for those who have their Bibles, please turn on me your Bibles to Proverbs 31, chapter, um, chapter 31, verses 13 um, to 31. I know I read these every week, but since we have new time guests, I want to make sure they are on the same page as us. We good, Carl? <clears throat> All right, verse 13. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it's yet night, and she provides food for her household and, and portions for her, hay, her maidens. She considers her fields and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength, and, and she makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hand to the distaff, and her hands holds the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. <clears throat> excuse me. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and praises her. Many women have done excellently but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you. Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity that I can be able to uh, give insight and wisdom to the people in this room. I pray, Father God, that you speak articulately through me, through your Holy Spirit, so I can be able to give exactly what you would like the people in this room to hear today. I thank the Lord for your wisdom. I thank the Lord for your insight. Thank the Lord for the book of Proverbs. And we, yes, we're at the end of it, Father God, but though we are in this series, we can still apply everything that we've learned in these few months. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Before I go, in, go into deep into my message, I want to make sure I give you my, my uh, points this evening. For those who are taking notes, um, <laughs> no, you good, man, you good. For those who are taking notes, my, my first point is a misinterdependent woman it's dependent on these three things. An interdependent inter woman, and I'm gonna give you the definition of that in a little bit. A misinterdependent woman is dependent on these three things. She's dependent on God, she's dependent on others, and she's dependent on herself. A misinterdependent woman is a woman, give me one second, who is dependent on these three things. <laughs> God, others, and herself. Before I get into it, let me go ahead and give you some definitions before I get into my message today. For those who are taking notes, unfortunately, our screen is not working. I was going to have our notes up there, but I'll go ahead and give them to you uh, from here. We're going to talk about these three things, independence, dependence, and interdependence. Independence by definition, and I just want to give this because I don't like really preaching with my notes uh, necessarily. I like to kind of flow with it, so this is kind of helping me to kind of get you those notes early so you can go ahead and, and have those for your, for your weekly of times with God. But independence, freedom from the control, influence, support, or aid of others. Dependence, by definition, the state of relying on or needing someone or something for aid or support. Interdependence is basically, by definition, mutually dependent. For those taking notes, I'm going to say those one more time. Independence, by definition, is freedom from the control, influence, support, or aid of others. Dependence, by definition, 
the state of relying on or needing someone or something for aid or support. Interdependence, by definition, is just simple, mutually <clears throat> dependent. For, yes, one more time. <laughs> Interdependent, independence by definition is freedom from the control, influence, support, or aid of others. Dependence by definition is the state of relying on or needing someone or something for aid or support. And this is videotape, so <laughs> if you don't feel like taking notes, you can always watch this a little bit later. But interdependence by definition is basically mutually dependent. For short, <laughs> I should have gave you the short version. For short, no dependence, a lot of dependence, and some dependence. Independence basically saying I have no dependence on something. Dependence saying I need a lot of a dependence of it. And interdependence saying I have some dependence. Our world today, when it comes to women and independence, and men as well as independence, there are two extremes. It's so funny in our life today is that they paint a very vivid picture of the two extremes. One extreme is independence and the other extreme is dependence. In our life today, you have this, this mentality, this concept of life where people have declared their independence. They don't want no one to control them, no one to influence them, no one to give them any support or aid. We live in a life, in a world where we are so independent at our core. It's tragic because in the beginning of time, Eve and Adam declared their independence from God. And they lived a life where they say, you know what, I am independent of his control, his influence, his support, and his aid. When we live in these two extremes, this extreme of independence, we live a life saying, I don't need any support or aid from this area here. We live a life where we say, you know what, I may not need a man, I may not need a woman, I may not need these different things in my life because I'm independent. Another extreme is dependence. If you look at our world today, a lot of people are living a life based upon dependence. You look at the welfare, the, the food stamps, you look at many people being dependent on government, being dependent on the church, being dependent on other people to the point where they become a leech. God in and of himself doesn't want us to be these two extremes. He doesn't want us to be independent, nor does he want us to be overly dependent. He wants us to be in the middle, mutually dependent. Interdependence, by definition, is basically saying that we all are dependent on something. Without my mom, I would not be here today. My mom, my father, I would not be here. I am dependent on her help and her support. I'm dependent on the volunteer support. I'm dependent on people's support, and as well as they depend on me as well. Society has proven, even God and his creation are articulately woven within his creative plan, the interdependence of everything. If you look at the ecosystem, I was watching uh, Animal Planet the other day, and the civilian people back there in Kenya had killed the hippo. And people got upset saying, why did we kill the hippo? The hippo was causing so much trouble. But they killed the hippo to provide food for the rest of the animals in that area. At the death of something comes life for something else. We're all interdependent. Imagine a life where we don't have anybody to depend on. There's a lot of people in this room who are isolated, alone, living a life so independent from anybody's help. They are quiet on the inside. Their voices are so faint. They, we don't even know what's wrong. We smile so beautifully. We walk around like we've got everything together, but we have been so independent for so long that we've been so isolated to the point that we don't have no one to help us. Who's in this room right now is quiet, but at the same time hurting. See, God doesn't want us to be overly <clears throat> independent because the Bible says it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. We are completely, 100% dependent on God. We are so dependent on God to the point where if he shut the air off in this world, we'll all be flapping on this floor like fish because we're so dependent on God. But through our free will, there's a unique parallel between God's sovereign will and our free will. And there's some, something unique and special about that correlation, but yet such vast difference. Because when you look at God's sovereign will, God knows everything. God's in control. But if you look at man's free will, how do we couple those two together simultaneously to work so perfectly together? When you look at it very closely, you'll see. See, God doesn't want us to be independent of him because we desperately need him. Nor does God want us to be dependent on him. God doesn't want us to be so dependent on him that we can't move. God gave us the ability to create. Let's look at these four C's. There's a creator, there's creation, there's creativity, and there's the ability to create. We have an essence about ourselves as God-like. Now, we're not equal to God. Please don't even have the audacity even articulate in your mind to believe that you are equal to God. Even 1% of God, we're not even close to being equal to him, but yet we are like him in a way. When he has the creative ability, he created us, and therefore he gave us the ability to create. God did not care for us to be so dependent on him that we don't move. It's like, a, it's like a video game. This might go over your lady's head. I'm going to get to you, but let me get through my introduction. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. When you're playing a game of Grand Theft Auto, there's different parts in the game where well, that's a pretty bad video game to talk about in the message, but we don't advocate those violence. <laughs> but nonetheless, I couldn't think of no other video game that can go close to this. But when you're in Grand Theft Auto, or, well, I forget, Grand Theft Auto, parts of the game is very strategic. 
parts of the game you see on this top right corner, left corner, different objectives and different things that you're supposed to do. We are dependent on that guidance, not in Grand Theft Auto, but in life we are dependent on those instructions. But at the same time, don't you see in the game sometimes there's a period of the game where you get the free lance? See, we get so dependent on God to the point where we need God to tell us everywhere we got to do. Tell God, what kind of toothpaste should I use? Should I go to the bathroom, God? Should I go do this? God does not want us to be so dependent on him to the point to where everything about ourselves rely on him. He gave us the uniqueness of this free will to be able to live life and explore. He doesn't sit there and say, you know what, go explore on your own free will without him. But if you have the heart of God and the love of God and you're so enamored by him, he said, if you delight yourself in me, I'll have your desires. And when God says, you know what, I don't have to tell you where to drive to go to work. I don't have to tell you all these different things. If you know when you're wise, you will get there yourself. See, God doesn't want us to be independent of him to the point where we say, God, I don't need you because a fool does that. A fool says they have no need of God. But when a person declares their independence from God, they say, you know, I keep God out of my free will. Therefore, I make my own choices. I do what I got to do. I don't care what God has to say. But God also doesn't want us to be so dependent on him to the point that we never explore and to create. And there's many people who are so dependent on God for everything, they haven't even gone out into the lands of life and, and conquered many valleys and conquered many mountains and achieved great things because God doesn't want nobody who just isolates and suffocates their ability to create. What haven't you created because you so depend on God? Or what have you pursued outside of God to the point to where you want to create your own world, but without him, all that would destroy itself in time? When you look at women... There's a culture about this misindependent woman, this woman who says, I have no need of certain things. Now, independence is not bad because I need to be independent from, declare my independence from sin. I got to get, there's some things I need independence from. There's some things that I don't have no, I shouldn't have no influence or control over my life. But something about society has programmed men and women to become independent at their core. Isn't a tragedy that we, we live a life where we get so consumed about these two extremes, whether you're a woman that says, you know what, I don't need nobody's help, or you can be a woman that says, well, does anybody need me? There's two extremes with this independent mentality. One period of the mentality says, you know what, I have no need of no man. I don't, but I don't have, women may say, I don't have no need of a man. I have my own, I have my own career, I have my own degrees, I do my own things. And there's nothing wrong with having degrees. I love an intellectual woman. Please intrigue my mind. But what I'm saying, when you're so engulfed in your accomplishments and your accolades to the point to where I can't even know your personality outside of your specialized different passions that you have, then I can't mix and mesh with you, girl. But when a woman of two extremes says, you know what, I am independent, I have no need of something, or a woman says, I am independent because nobody needs me. There's probably some women in this room right now who's feeling that way. There's some women in this room or some women who's watching online right now who says, you know what, I'm independent. I don't need no man. I, I'm successful. And, and that mentality of the feministic type of ideology has confused a lot of women in believing that I got to have these different accomplishments just to prove that I'm equal to a man. And like I said previously in, 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 <clears throat> in my, my talks with the, when it comes to women, that you don't have to prove that you're equal to a man. The Bible says that both man and woman are created to be equal. That we are made in the image and likeness of God, therefore I don't have to declare this level of independence. Or are you a lady who says, you know what, since I am nothing, there's no need for me. Both of these type of independent thoughts gets a woman to a place where of isolation. We were never meant to be isolated. We was meant to be interdependent of each other. Without you, there would be no me. Without me, there may not be no you. In some way in life, we're intricately woven together in God's plan. And when we live a life where we isolate ourselves through the Declaration of Independence and we say, God, I'm over here and I don't need this person because of fear. I don't need these different things that you may be suffocating yourself in the process because, baby girl, that's some things that you need from a man. Sweetheart, there's some things that you're going to need from, from the interdependence that God has created in all of society because it's nothing worse than a person without love. It's nothing worse than a woman and a man without companionship. But Satan loves to intricately design a plan, a society, a way of thought where many people says, you know what, I don't need these different things. Or through life challenges, we get so caught up in, in what we don't have to the point that we isolate ourselves because we feel like nobody understands. <laughs> but God understands. An interdependent woman is, de is dependent on these three things. She's dependent on God. She's dependent on others. And she's dependent on herself. Let me check my notes to make sure I covered everything. Y'all learning something? Make sure I covered everything. Let me make sure I say this before I move forward. When people become so independent of God or dependent on him, 
they become complacent to a degree. The Bible says he'll lead and guide you into all what? Truth. God may be able to lead me to truth, but what do I do when that truth is in my life? Many times we get so caught up on, on our interdependence, not interdependence, but independence to the point to where we burn bridges. To the point where since I have no need of something, I isolate that individual, that thing, acting like as if I don't need it. It reminds me of a story between me and the YMCA. When I was working at the YMCA, God led me out of the Y. And many people look at my, who know my story look at me like a fool because they're like, man, you left the Y? But I left the Y to have a job here. That's what God led me to. And it's funny, in this, in this passage where I live my life to the point where I'm glad I had good graces at the Y. <laughs> because unfortunately, things did not work out at the second job. Therefore, since I am interdependent on even my past relationships, I make sure that as I give and as I receive, that I do well when I give. Because many people burn bridges to the point where they feel like they don't need nobody. So you wild out, you act crazy, you do what you do, acting as if you don't need your mama, your daddy, or your auntie, or your uncle, or your friends down the road. Because we're all intricately connected together. And sometimes through our poor behavior, and sometimes through our mismanagement of our time, and of ourselves, we live a life where we mismanage everything to the point to where nobody wants to deal with us. I wasn't going to say fool with us. It didn't come out like that I wanted to say, but we live a life where nobody wants to fool with us because we mismanage or we burn bridges. I want to make sure I put that point out there before I continue. What I say, a misinterdependent woman is dependent on these three things. What I say? God, others, and herself. <laughs> boy, your boy tired, but we good. We're going we to work it through. Let's look at these, let's look at those three points before I get into what God provides and what we provide and as well as what men provide and what women provide. A woman is dependent on God, others, and herself. Like I said previously in my couple of messages about women, I, I talked about how a woman is completely dependent on God. That her strength comes from her fear of him. Her strength comes from her reverence of God. Her strength does not come on all of her, all of her accolades or achievements. So her strength doesn't come from, from, and there's some things that come, there's confidence that come when you achieve great things. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's some type of strength that only God can give. Because the Bible says beauty is vain or the charm is deceitful, but a woman who fears God is to be praised. The other scriptures in Proverbs says houses and money are inherited, but a prudent wife is from God. Another verse says a man who can find a wife. I forgot the scripture, but we keep going. But what I'm talking about is a woman who's developing God is more precious than any type of development that she gets anywhere else in life. She understands that it's in God that I get my strength. She desperately needs God as well. What about others? Let's talk about what a woman is depending on. Let me look at my notes. For those who are taking notes, let me read these to you. She's dependent on her household. For those who are married and achieving to be married, her husband and her helpers. And when I say about herself, she's dependent on her mind, her mobility, and her motivation. I'll get to others later. Let's talk about herself. Every woman, every man, has package inside them purpose. There's something special about purpose. The, thing, the day that changed my life was the day that my purpose was made clear. Because when I have a purpose, I have a sense of awareness. I have a sense of, of strategy. I have a sense of, 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 of prov not provision, but, but a pursuit because I know that I have this, this reason for being here. Every woman in here is so worth something, so beyond the pressures of Ruby. She's worth so much in life, and it's so sad that deep inside of her is buried amongst, inside all of the filth in her life and, or the filth of man life to the point to where those sweet treasures of who she is and that purpose inside of her is lying dormant in her. I heard a person say the richest place on the planet is the graveyards. When people die with their purpose inside of them. So there's something beautiful about when a girl understands she's also dependent on herself. And when I say interdependence, I'm meaning that there's a part of me I'm mutually dependent on and I'm mutually dependent on others. But it's tragic that many of us don't understand the unique gifts that we have on the inside. A woman is so precious, a, a nurturer, a provider, not a provider. Well, she, well, she can. She got paper. She can, she can, well, anyway, but she have all these different <laughs> traits about herself that's so unique to the point that when she understands how gifted she is and how precious she is and how wonderfully and fearfully made she was to the point that when she understands that concept and that path, she'll say, you know what? I have something to offer. See, a woman who's left to herself that only offers things to make herself look good and her self-esteem shine bright is a woman who's probably worth a little. Because what do you give out? You were made to be givers. You were made to express. She was made something about a woman that just, that just that can take a little small vision, a small dream, a small concept and multiply. It's something, something beautiful about her mind. They said the mind is a terrible thing to waste. 
And we men and we women have lost our minds. We may not be schizo, we may not be bipolar, we might not be crazy, but, but somewhere in our life, something is controlling our minds outside of God. Something in our life is not renewing our mind, but polluting our minds. There's something in this society, in this culture, that's causing us not to think the way we ought. And, and sometimes we either think highly than we ought to think about ourselves, or we think far below. But imagine a woman with a mind. There's nothing wrong with a woman who's intellectual, because in that mind, when she develops different things, she can produce things. It's, something, it's nothing more precious. I mean, a girl can look good on the outside, but if I can have a conversation with her, it's something that's such and special when a girl actually has a mind. What about her mobility? When you look at a woman's mobility, they're able for her to move. There's, there's something unique about her that she's dependent on because people need your mobility. Proverbs talk about how she provided for her household early in the morning before the sun came up. It's something about when a woman is mobile and a woman who's, who's, who's pursuing life and doing great things in life. What about her motivation? There's something worse when a woman loses their motivation even do anything or she has a perverted motivation let's talk about these three things i'm giving y'all a lot of points man y'all learning something though this is the last part of the series so i may go a little bit long just joking <laughs> um let's talk about what men provide and what women provide interdependence once again is a definition of the definition of it is mutually dependent that i am dependent we all are dependent on each other that we all need each other to survive, like kumbaya types, that we all need each other to survive in this life. Don't tweet that, Will. I know you're about to say something on Twitter about that. But anyway, when, it, when, you, when you understand that, that we are all needing of each other, I also got to be aware that I am also playing a part in it as well. I am dependent on someone to help me, but I'm also, someone else is also dependent on me to help them. So how can I get two, three, two or three ladies to tell me, what is, what is the three things you look for in a man? that you feel that you're going to be dependent on, that you're going to need in a relationship or in a marriage or for those who are currently in one? What do you need as women in a relationship? What are, what are you dependent on? What is a woman dependent on in a man? Stability. Spiritual. Stability, spirituality. What else? Humor. Humor. See, that's good now. Y'all got to be funny, fellas. You heard what she said. <laughs> you said security, no, stability, spirituality, and humor. For those taking notes, I have these four things of what a man should provide a woman, that a woman is actually built by God to depend on, not, not overly depend, to be so consuming that she needs this man, this man become an idol. But a man and a woman, you got to understand that we're all resources. God is the ultimate source. And like I always give this analogy, I talk about how water is the source, but a faucet is the resource by which the water flows through. We have to understand that we all are resources for each other. That's why God created us for companionship, for friendship. That's why we love, we need love, we need affection. We're created to be in, in awe of each other and enamored by each other and in love with each other. But society has painted a picture where we either have a false perception of love to the point that we get our hearts broke because it's actually infatuation, or we get so overly consumed without no need of that to the point that we drown ourselves in a process because, ladies and gentlemen, we all need love. Was that Will Smith? No, it wasn't Will Smith. Okay, never mind. A man, a man, a woman depends on these three things, these four things from a man. Five things. I have strength. I have security. I have stability. I had affection. And I had love. It's much more. It's much more. But these are the things that I, that while I was brainstorming last night came to my mind. A woman is dependent on security, strength, stability, affection, and love and humor. <laughs> Let's look at strength, security, and stability. If you can lift the couch, lady, there's more power to you. <laughs> but you're going to need us to at least carry a couch. <laughs> At some level, that's why God made us bigger. God made us more uh, muscular, more, more uh, able to do things because he understands that a woman is going to need a man to actually lift something. She needs not only for her physical strength, but also uh, of, not only does she need just physical strength, but she also needs spiritual strength. Fellas, you have to understand a woman is dependent on you to lead and guide her, not to the point to where she becomes dependent on you. Y'all supposed to help each other on this process of life. But you have to also understand that a woman, God created us to be the, the more stable one. God created us to be the more, a more practical one. And, and God created us to be the one that kind of help, not help guide the woman, but the woman also help us. We're supposed to help each other because we're intricately this different, not intricately different, but we're just different. With that strength, I understand as a man, before I even embark on a relationship, before I even get, make, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> before I even get in a relationship with a woman, 
before I even get in a relationship with a woman, I got to ask myself, am I even strong? Am I eating the wrong things? Am I, am, I put, am I becoming a liability to her because I have a disease, because I haven't taken care of my body? Am I actually able and strong to be able to defend for my family? Am I, am I even strong enough to be able emotionally, physically, and mentally strong enough to be able to handle the intricacies, the, the complexities of a young woman, and, and also the complexities of a relationship, a marriage, a, a, a fatherhood, and husbandhood? Do I have the strength to manage it? Because a woman is going to look for these two things. She needs security and she needs stability. If she's not stable, she is going to be like, why? Because she's a woman who nurtures. And if the, if the, if the garden is not taken care of, if the household is not taken care of, she gets worried in the process. So if your life is not stable, fellas, how can a woman ever depend? Because there's one thing that a woman will not, will not settle for is an unstable man. Because if God has called her to submit to you, not in a derogatory way, but if God has called her to submit to you, then she has to be confident to the fact that this man hears from God and this man is actually balanced and this, this man is able to do what he has said he was supposed to do. This man is stable. It doesn't matter if his money's stable. It doesn't matter if he got all the money in the world. Is his heart stable? There's a lot of handsome young men who are rich but will slap women all the time. There's a lot of men who's stable in all their endeavors, who got it all together, can balance a checkbook better than anybody. They got millions upon millions upon racks upon racks. They got all these different things in life, but their soul is unbalanced. Fellas, can, are, you, are you strong enough? Are you stable enough? Are you secure enough in yourself? Because a woman doesn't want an insecure man. There's something worse when a man is not confident. Women, see, 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 that's, that's something. The Bible says that we, the man, was made in the, for the glory of God. And man, we men were made in his glory. And they said, the Bible also said that the woman was made for the glory of the man. If you look at that scripture, you see the unique parallel that says that that's why we're more attractive on the outside. And what I mean by that, that's why we are so, uh, how can I put it? We are so based upon looks that we're like, man, she bad, she's attractive. A woman's and a man's attraction is different at times because a woman will be with a man even if he's humorous, even if he's got a good personality. A woman will, will kind of downgrade a little bit. He, well, he may not be all that attractive, but yeah, he makes me feel good on the inside. There's something special because she was made for the glory of the man and the man was made in the glory of God. We're always made intricately woven together for God. So when a man understands, when a woman understands that a man loves a woman who's attractive and, and, and when a man understands that the attractiveness of a man is not based basically based upon how hazel his eyes are, how wavy his hair, or how, how smodelly he looked, no matter what he looks like, that she's more consumed about the personality and, and, and how she makes her laugh and how, she make, how he makes her feel and how, how, he, she make, how he makes her feel warm at times, he'll understand that I gotta make sure, am I even confident on the inside? Do you walk with your shoulders down? Do you walk like you're depressed all the time? Are you confident? Because God, the woman looks at you and says, I'm looking for security. I'm looking for stability. I'm also looking for strength. Y'all learning something? Let's look at affection and love. Affection and love. See, we all need love. We all need this love, and this love is a word that's hard to define. Love, is, love definition is so vast. Love definition is so, so, so deep and so rich that even we can live a whole life then not really grasp what it means to love because the Bible says no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for a friend. So even death or dying or sacrifice in my life is, is another level of expression of love. So we'll, we'll probably never really understand this whole thing called love, but we know that we do need it. And a woman is looking at a man and said, do you love me the way I need to be loved? The tragedy in this communication is difference of a man kind, a woman kind, and in the middle is this demonic plan that says, you know what, how can I get the women to think that men are like women? How can I get the men to think that women are like men? That's why men, when they get in sexual relationships with a woman, she wants to cuddle, but you want to bang her out. You want to do all these different things because you look at sex differently than what she does. And what happens in life, we lost the communication. The communication is not coming cohesive together because we don't take the time to develop and understand the opposite sex. Are you to the point to where all that you see in pornography is think that's how she wants to be loved? Do you think that all that you see and what you define love to be is think that that's how she receives it? Love is so vast, but affection is yet different. You may love her, but are you showing the affection that she needs? Because she depends on that. Now that I don't beat up on the man, let's talk about the women. <laughs> Fellas looking at me like, dang, bro. <laughs> What women provide? Can I get three men to tell me what a brother needs from a woman? Or what, he, what is he depending on that without it, life would just suck? Give me three things. Oh, my bad. 
Communication, communication, that's a good one. Respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, -E -E I feel you, I feel you. Support, oh, you <laughs> support, respect, and communication. I'm gonna add those, because those are three good ones. Oh, I got support, compassion, and respect. Let's talk about, let's talk about that. A man's love language, its foundation is found in respect. The moment that we don't feel like we're respected, the moment that we feel like there's no understanding, is the moment that we close up. We are dependent on a woman that respects us. Not in no slavery, dogma type way where we sit there, you gotta salute me every time I come in the house and you gotta do all these different things. There may be some different policies that I want to in my house that when I come home there may be some things I need, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But what I'm saying is, is that with that level of respect, I gotta understand that when I, well there's something that, 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 that happens to a man that when he loses his respect of his own woman, how does it feel, fellas, when you feel like you're not respected? How does it feel when you feel like when you come home to your wife or you come home to your girl and, and when you're pursuing a girl, she seems like as if she don't understand? A man also needs, what was the second one? Who said, that's her respect and I heard what else? Support. Why support? I feel you. Yeah. Um, job stresses him out, but he's got to do what needs to be done to provide. Yeah. When he comes home, the last thing he needs is his wife to be on his back about how he's not doing this and how he's not doing that. Sometimes he just needs that emotional support to help carry him through. Yeah. As men, sometimes I can feel the heart of the man because I'm a man. Support and respect are paramount. We men sometimes. It's, it's nothing worse than a woman who's distracted, nothing worse than a man who's distracted, who are ob oblivious to the need of their spouse. If I don't, that's the reason why, I, you know, when it comes to relationships, I got to be very careful because, and we all got to be very careful. And we got to also understand that, that we desperately need these things. In order for us to survive, in order for us to actually work cohesive together, now will marriage and relationships be perfect? No, it won't be perfect. They won't be perfect because two people sharing one thing, who for those, for those who ever had roommates, two people sharing one thing can be sometimes chaotic. But when you understand that God's grace is supposed to be sufficient in those matters to make sure that he, he's the only one that can bring the two together. But in order for those two to work together, they have to be some level of understanding because when a man comes home and he's had that support or when a woman comes home, she don't have that affection, what happens? Because we're all dependent on each other. This independent woman who's isolated because she feels as if she needs nothing or she's isolated because she feels like no one needs her, is a woman who will always find herself alone. A man who, who, who is independent of his core and who doesn't feel like he's needed, they'll be isolated at the core. I talked to a friend the other day and I talked to her about this matter She says sometimes in life she feels as if no one cares. That's why she wants to be independent. Her mama left her when she was young. She was a foster child. And she's living life as if like, Josh, but you want to talk about this interdependent woman, but you don't understand what's going on out here. It's tough out here when, when, when the ladies around us pressures to try to live up to the, to the hype. There's pressures to try to be successful because in this life we're not equal, Josh. <clears throat> She says, Josh, in this world, we're not equal to you. You make more money, you do all these great things, you have all these different things for you. I said, yes, I understand. But I told her we're in this world, not of it. The moment you get consumed by what the devil has designed and you lose sight on what God has designed, then you'll be so caught up on, I, I feel I ought to be independent. I feel that I ought to do what I got to do. I don't need these different things because the moment an independent woman comes in a home and an insecure man is in a home, what happens is they both devoid of what they need. 
And how many people right now are living a life of their declaration of independence and living a life based upon I don't need anything, I don't need nobody's support, not knowing that you're suffocating yourself in the process because God never created us to be alone. And even if you don't have a man in this room, even if you don't have a wife, a husband, God says I'm always there. There's times in my life where I find that I can't talk to no one sometimes. And sometimes in life I can get isolated, but God says I'm always here. There's something unique about this Proverbs 31. Let's look at it. Let's look at her. Let's, let's look at her. Verses 13 through 19 paints a very vivid picture. Verses 13 through 19 really talks about her hard work and her discipline. Let's look at verses 13 through 19. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. Meaning that without any, type of, without any type of permission, she goes out there and seeks wool and flax and she's willing because she wants to help. She's like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar, meaning that she's a lady who, who's very concerned about the food that is needed for her family to survive. The, what this Proverbs woman was doing was, back in the historical Bible days, they had to go long distance just to get, get rich foods, foods that was, that was healthy, because sometimes the food in that marketplace sometimes wasn't always there. So when they said she's like the ships of the merchant, she will go all out of her way to make sure, because she knows that her family is dependent on her. That she'll go out instead of being a woman that says, well, I could pop it in the microwave. She knew how to cook and she, she prepared and she did all these different things to ensure because she understands her family needs. Now, am I sitting there saying every woman has to learn how to cook? Yes. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> there's a lost art when it comes to cooking. My mom told me, she said, boy, you better learn how to cook because these women these days don't know how to cook because this woman was a woman who knew how to cook because she understood that if I, I want to be praised at the gates, I want to be known because, not because of my accolades and my achievements, and sometimes women want to be known about what they have achieved, but not what they've done in their home. Because what happens sometimes, both men and women, we get so consumed about working. He's working 60 hours a week. She's working 60 hours a week. And who's teaching the kids? We, we love the marketplace, but what about the home? And we as single people and some people who are married and people who are pursuing relationships, you're working so hard. God never intended for you to burn out. God never intended for you to work. He gave you wisdom. He gave you insight to do stuff in a gracious and peaceful way. Is it going to be easy all the time? No. But when we live a life where we're always trying to achieve, we work so hard, and that's why our society is where it is, because our children have nobody to raise them but the satanic and demonic system that was intricately woven inside of the society on purpose. And what happens is, Instead of going and getting the food that I need for my family, instead of a man going out and do what he's supposed to and being there for his family, what happens is we give them little these popcorn little dinners, these little things that you heat up for a minute or two to the point where it's killing our own kids. I don't want to be a man that's so consuming this ministry and so consuming my business and so consuming life that I forget what I am dependent, what is dependent on me. Who or what is dependent on you today? Are you willing to go into great lengths to make sure that your sisters, your brothers, your moms, your dads, the people that need you? It's so sad that we, the, the number one thing that we fail to do and that people need the most is pray for them. You wonder why people are dying? You wonder why people are demonically oppressed? You wonder why people are going chaotic and insane? It's because no one is willing to pray for them. Thank God someone prayed for me. But who's praying for those you need? Verse 15, she rises while it's yet night and provides food for her household. This woman woke up four, five, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, because back in those days, they didn't have microwaves, they didn't have stoves. They had to go out there and kill some animals sometime. They had to go and, and prepare the food. But she understood the, the, the need that her family needed. She understood what, what, what my family needs in order to survive. And, and, I, and she even had to downgrade, and he had to downgrade to a place where they understand that what is, what is cohesive, what is good for the overall needs of my family. And she also gave portions to her maidens. Lady, she's entrepreneurial. She considers the fields and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. That lets you know, fellas, you don't sit there. Oh, a woman is not, and that's the, 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 what's the word? How can I put it? The, the issues in our life is this. Many people view this as one extreme, where the woman has to be a housewife. That a woman, the only thing she'll do is take care of the home. 
But we see here that this woman went out there and bought a field. That means this woman said, you know what, I am actually skilled too. There's every woman in this room has an idea, she has a concept, she has invention, she has, she has entrepreneurial endeavors. There's nothing wrong with, with being successful. There's nothing wrong with getting a six-figure job. There's nothing wrong with being successful. We'll make sure it doesn't contradict or take away from the family that's more important. So she also was an entrepreneur. Verse 17, she dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceived that her merchandise is profitable, means she's confident her lamp does not go out at night. All these different things highlight verses 20 through 23. By her hard work and her discipline, by her concern about the needs of her family, by her being so concerned about the health and the well-being of her husband and the health and well-being of, of life, she made sure that these people were taken care of. Look, let's look at verse 20. By her hard work and by her discipline, she opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself, her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders in the land. When you understand that this woman is not a woman who's engulfed with the mentality of this independence. And like I said before, there's nothing wrong with being independent. There's nothing wrong with being self-reliant. There's nothing wrong with, 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 with doing things on your own, but when that becomes your, 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 your rottenness, the, 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 the guile that's inside of your heart and the man's heart as well, when that becomes the, the reason because of, because of low self-esteem, because of whatever, whatever trying to prove whatever you want to prove in life, when that becomes the center core of your life, you'll live a life where you don't need certain things. And when you don't need certain things, what happens when you don't have them? God wants us to understand, and I'm about to close here because I'm going too long. That we are desperately in need of him. A woman would not be a woman that's praised in the gates. A woman would not be clothed in strength. A woman would not be any of these great things that Proverbs 31 says without God. A woman has to understand that she is so dependent on God for everything. Because if she don't have God working in her heart, then she may live a life where she may pursue her independence because she feels like she may not need a man. There's some women who overly need a man. <laughs> so independence is not based upon my not having a need for, but you, we gotta get to a place where we are balanced, where I understand, yes, I understand I depend, and I'm gonna need a wife one day. I'm gonna need some children one day. I'm gonna need a vacation one day, like right now. <laughs> There's things that I need, and just because I need it doesn't mean I pervert what I have. Is that I am mindful. Imagine if you made decisions with these three people in mind. The best way to make sure that you're interdependent is to make sure you do things with God in mind, others in mind, and yourself in mind. What does that mean? Before I make a decision, when I have God in mind before I make a decision, I'm balanced. What does God say about messing around with this girl? What does, what does God say about sleeping around? What, what, what is he, before I even make a decision with the money, before I make a decision with the girl, before I even make a decision with my time, I'm not sitting there saying I'm always asking God, should I brush my teeth right now? If my breath stinks, I gotta go brush it. But what I'm saying is, when it comes to life decisions, when it comes to decisions that I need to make in life, I always acknowledge him in everything. Because anytime I make a step without God, I will always have consequences. When I make a decision without God, I will always have a mess to clean. The Bible says the blessings of God adds no sorrow. What is sorrowful in your life? Just because your car is brand new, just because you have a nice house doesn't mean God gave it to you. Because what God gives you have no sorrow. When I make decisions with God in mind, I'm okay. I also got to make decisions with others in mind. There are certain things I cannot do because I have people depending on it. I can't just abruptly be like, I'm shutting down unplugged. I can't make decisions, I'm just going to take all the money and do what I want to do. <laughs> I can't make decisions because I got people who's got, that's dependent on what we do here. I can't make decisions based upon when I get in a relationship, when I get married. I can't make decisions without my wife in mind because if I make decisions without her in mind, she, will, she may get lost in the process. A lady can't make decisions without her husband in mind because y'all are one. Y'all are connected. We are connected. And when we make decisions without each other, it may cause a deficit in someone else. Also, when I'm driving, when I'm doing anything in life, anybody who's in my car, anybody who's connected to me at any given moment, I got to be conscious of because I make a decision without them in mind, I could lose their life. I also got to make decisions with myself in mind. 
If I, if I can't do it, I can't do it. If I'm not able, I'm not able. When I have these three things in mind, God, others, and myself, I'll be an interdependent person. Understand that if I make any decision without God, without others in mind, and with myself in mind, not only will I suffer, but others may suffer as well. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We appreciate you. I pray, God, I, I, I didn't cover everything in my notes, but I'm pretty sure during the Q&A I will. But as we end this series, God, I just pray that you touch the hearts of everyone in this room, every young lady in this room, that she understands and that we as men, everyone understands that we are dependent on you more than we ever can imagine. But with that dependence, you want us to also be a, some, to some degree able to do things without that dependence. But God, I just appreciate you, Father God, what your son did on the cross for me. Just like I said about the hippo dying, the, the hippo was killed for others to live, for other animals to live. And we thank you for your sacrifice, Father God, that gave me life. That the number one person I'm dependent on is Jesus Christ. Because without his sacrifice, without his death, there will be no eternal life. So Father God, I appreciate what you've done for me. Because I may one day be dependent on the wife, I may be dependent on others, I may be dependent on myself, but God, if I'm not dependent on Jesus and repent in my life, where would I be today? So I pray, God, as we go into intermission, as Danielle gives the announcements, that people begin to think about their relationship with you and how much they need you for guidance and wisdom in this life. Father, we appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give it up.